Who would win in a fight between two of Nintendo's best fighters, Little Mac and Min Min? I'm Ink and this is Smash Bracket, the show where we put every character in Super Smash Bros Ultimate into a giant animated fighting tournament to figure out who's canonically the strongest. And to figure that out, we gotta start with our first fighter at only 17 years old, coming in at 107 pounds and 4 feet 8 inches tall, the bruiser from the Bronx, Little Mac. I don't think anybody works harder than me, so I'm a very hard working fighter. I'm probably one of the hardest working fighters of this generation. Little Mac has come to be known as the Bruiser from the Bronx. For as long as he could remember, Mac wanted to be a top level boxer in the World Video Boxing Association. Uh, unfortunately, with his small stature, he was starting from a severe disadvantage. He spent years looking to make a name for himself, but no matter how many fights he did, he got beaten down time and time again. Eventually taking so many losses that a promoter told him to throw in the towel altogether. He was born a loser from the Bronx, he would always be a loser from the Bronx, and he didn't have what it takes to be a real boxer. Fortunately for Little Mac, after this harsh rejection, it wouldn't be long until he met somebody who would change his life forever. A previous heavyweight world champion, Doc Lewis. Through all the bruises and defeats, Doc saw the heart of a champion within Mac and took him in as his protege. Under Doc's guidance, Mac began one of the toughest training regimens ever devised, practicing for days and days on end with almost no sleep. Eventually though, the time for training had passed, and Mac was finally ready to test his skills against a real boxer, a Frenchman who called himself Glass Joe. They battled it out, and for the first time, Mac actually won. But he had a long way to go if he was going to be champion. So he continued to hone his skills to face off against the world's best fighters, never losing hope along the way. And these weren't your average boxers either. For example, take the fighter named Great Tiger. He had the ability to teleport around the ring and create after images to mess with his opponents while fighting. Mac had no trouble taking him out despite this. Maybe due to the fact that he's so fast that he's moving his arms to block attacks at nearly 30 miles per hour. Great Tiger was far from his only skilled opponent too. Take Mr. Sandman, who was strong enough to break a stone wall with almost no effort. Or Don Flamenco, who punched this bowl nearly 1500 feet into the air. This goes without saying, but he would have had to been hitting with some serious power here. Hundreds and hundreds of times stronger than even the most powerful real life boxer. Which, I guess might be obvious by the distinct lack of boxers punching bulls into the air with their fists. When adjusting for the surface area of a boxing glove, this punch comes out to about 4.75 kilojoules per centimeter squared. To put that number into perspective, that's like a gram of TNT being detonated across every square centimeter of your face with each attack. Little Mac's able to take this damage and dish out similar amounts of damage with his strongest attack, the Star Punch. With this, he was able to knock out Bald Bull in a single attack, who's tough enough to withstand the charge of a raging bull. There are a surprising number of bull-related feats in this franchise. To gain access to this max-powered star punch, all Mac needs to do is land three regular hits in a row without being hit himself. Mac doesn't just pack power, but he also mixes it with some serious speed. Mac is able to enhance his perception and movement to a level so fast that the world seems slowed down in comparison. Taking a look at this scene, we can measure the slowed down time against the distance that Mac's punch covers. The punch itself comes out in only two frames, making this attack speed nearly 33 miles per hour. Mac makes full use of this speed with his signature strategy of looking for an opening in his opponent's defenses and then closing the gap to punish their mistakes, which is even easier with his super mode that allows his punches to come out at uh, six, 6 miles per hour. Well, that's disappointing. Alright. What makes Mac a true threat though isn't his strength, speed, or durability. Mac is constantly learning from and adapting to his opponents. It's hard to emphasize just how good Mac became. In this comic, Mac was tasked with running around the entire city while also fighting off a hundred men trying to take him down. Before they began cheating and Doc Lewis had to run them down with a truck, oh gosh I love him so much, Mac was actually doing super well and was on track to beat all of them and finish the race. Not only this, but Mac went on to win the entire WVBA championship time and time again, and he even took out the scariest video game character of all time, Mike Tyson. Not only did Mac win his first WVBA championship, but he defended that title over and over, becoming a legendary boxer with a win streak like no one had ever seen in the WVBA. In fact, he was so good that when it became time to retire, he decided that he wanted to go out with one last big bang. So he gloved up, took to the ring, and fought through 14 different opponents back to back with almost no break in between. 13 of these fighters were opponents that he'd faced off before, but the last one was freaking Donkey Kong. 
which I'm surprised was legal. It feels like one step removed from the fight in the Roman Colosseum. And while this isn't the moon punching version of the character we all know and love, a human beating an ape in combat is still really impressive. But anyway, all 13 of his opponents had advanced their skills and changed up their patterns, telegraphing far less and adding new moves to their repertoire, but Max still took them out. Not only did he defend his title one last time against these fighters, but he was also able to surpass his teacher and take out the former heavyweight champion himself, Doc Lewis. Max started off as a scrawny teen who couldn't beat a single opponent, but through sheer grit rose through the ranks to prove that he was truly worthy of being the world champion. But he never let that fame go to his head. Once he even donated all of his winnings to his opponents so that they could build new schools in their home country. Though his time in the ring was brief, Little Mac's legacy would go on to influence the WVBA for generations to come. But for those who really knew him, it wouldn't be the championship belt that they remembered. They'd see him for what he truly was. The scrappy underdog who fought against all odds time and time again and refused to give up no matter how many times he got punched out. Once upon a time, life across the planet developed a strange genetic mutation that caused their bodies to extend to unnatural lengths. This bizarre phenomena occurred in plants, animals, and most notably, humans, affecting over 20% of the world's population. It usually manifested itself during teenage years in the middle of the night, and while it could manifest in a few different ways, the most common effect of this mutation was 35-foot extendable corkscrew arms. And this quirk was almost uncontrollable to its host. That is is until an organization called the Arms Labs developed a mask that allowed the carriers to control their abilities to a precise degree. And the same company that provided these masks to the populace also did what any charitable organization would do. Launch a fighting competition that allows the mutants to punch each other in the face for the rest of the world's enjoyment. And thus, the Arms League was born. It was a great equalizer across the planet. By fighting to the top, anyone with enough skill could be declared the Arms Champion and guarantee a life of fame and riches. Many people People with the arms ability went to try out for the league, but only the best 600 were selected to compete. And among these 600 fighters, only one could become the champion. And one of these fighters rose uniquely above the rest. Meet Min Min, the Mandarin-speaking ramen bomber. Min Min specializes in hitting, throwing, and kicking her opponents to deal damage and deflect incoming strikes. She can launch her attacks at over 14 miles per hour, but with the assistance of her special rush mode ability, she can increase her combat speed to up to 70 miles per hour. And this speed allows Min Min to make full use of her extendable arms. She can attach custom weapons to each arm and change between them on the fly. She has a bunch of different weapons at her disposal, but when she entered the league, she came in with her preferred ones. Let's start with her most iconic, the dragon. This weapon can not only punch you in the face, but it can also shoot devastating lasers at you. The Ram Ram, on the other hand, can be launched like a boomerang to hit her opponents from unexpected angles. And her most powerful arm of all is the Megawatt, which essentially is an electricity-infused wrecking ball. Her arms are strong enough to shatter this huge slab of concrete in just one hit. We can adjust for the surface area of her pointiest arms that this is possible with to show that Min Min would need to be hitting with around 1500 kilojoules per centimeter squared. To put that in perspective, that's 90% the caloric energy stored within a pie. What are these analogies? Gosh. To put that in perspective, that's like slamming you with over half a pound of TNT with each hit, and Min Min is more than capable of taking comparable attacks and remaining standing. That's not to say she's impervious though. She does have two notable weaknesses. First off, three powerful hits to her arm can disable them for a few seconds, causing them to fall limp to the ground and leaving her wide open. Her second weakness, and most deadly of all, was only discovered after some covert arms lab research. Min Min's kryptonite is long bads. Uh, cause it makes her arms soggy. So, uh, I, I guess if she's fighting the crocodile from Where's My Water, she'd better be on high alert. Uh, I, I want to move on from this. In some tellings of the arm story, Min Min was able to rise to the very top of the competition, fighting through every other competitor and cementing herself as the greatest fighter in the league, to bring fame and glory to the power of ramen. Anyway, now that both of our fighters are set, it's time to get into our fight. But first, I'd like to urge you to check out our Patreon. For behind-the-scenes looks at our battles, music, and works in progress, Progress. Several of our scripts have to be significantly cut down for the sake of length in the animation, and if you want to see those there, feel free to check it out. All tiers receive the same rewards, so just pay what you're able to and a world of content will open up to you. With that out of the way, let's get into the fight and figure out who will advance on to the next round of the Smash Bracket and who will be eliminated. Let's get into it.
first fight hailing from the Bronx comes our very first challenger. Just another fight. I've got this. No sweat. The no sweat. From the Bronx, little Mac. And on the other side, we have our reigning champion, Min Min of the Nintendo Noodle House. Mac, listen up. Yeah, this might be her too. This might be her cry. But this is gonna be your belt. Show him what you get, Mac, baby! me out there. I can't understand a thing she's saying neither, but I don't think it's good. Listen, son. Yeah, she hit you good, but you're just like those arms of hers. No matter how many times you get punched out, you always spring right back into action. Yowza! That guy sure is tough. <laughs> Yeah, he's got bite to him, but you're one tough noodle yourself. Remember what your mom used to say? It's ramen time. Hey, Matt, get a crowd. You're taking home field and stealing it like it's home plate. Just a few more good hits, and it'll be sayonara. Yeah, you got it, Doc. <laughs> That's Japanese for bye. Hey, may the best fighter win. Yeah, let's give him a good show. Wait, you can speak English? Oh, my God. 
And there you go! In a series that's been full of some intense, high stake fights, it was really nice to have something more grounded this time around. Both fighters brought some advantages to the table, but this was a clear cut victory for Min Min. Little Mac's a master of boxing under the WVBA rules, but Min Min brought a challenge to the table that Mac just wasn't prepared to deal with. Not only was she mixing things up with grabs, kicks, and lethal weaponry, but she also managed to maintain a serious stat advantage. Let's start with a relatively unorthodox stat in debates like this, reach. In any fight, but especially fistfights, the distance that a fighter can attack is a serious advantage, even when it's just a matter of a few inches. A boxer's range is measured from fingertip to fingertip, and someone Little Mac size would have an average range of just under 5 feet. Compare that to Min Min, who even without her extendable arms would have a height advantage, but with her arms stretching out nearly 35 feet on both sides, this gives her a 70 foot range, which becomes a serious advantage. And that's without talking about the fighter's physicality either. Little Mac was undoubtedly strong, but his full power star punches require him to have some setup, which if you remember requires four punches in a row, three to set up the attack and one for the star punch itself. In order for Little Mac to take Min Min out of the fight, he'd need to land about 193 fully powered star punches, which comes out to a total of nearly 800 uninterrupted punches. While if Min Min was able to hit him a single time, he would need to start his star punch over from zero again, setting him back. But also, a single hit from Min Min would kill him almost immediately. This is extra dangerous for Little Mac if he were to ever try blocking an attack rather than slipping out of the way, since the deadly force would still be connected. Just one hit from her would take Mac out of the fight altogether, and this advantage was only furthered by the fact that Mac normally held a small speed advantage over Min Min, but if she activated her rush mode, she would suddenly surpass Mac to over double what he could perform. It is possible that Little Mac could pick up on her weaknesses and jab her arms three times while they're out in order to disable them and get some solid hits, but remember that Mac would still need to get almost 800 of these before Min Min gets a single one, which would be extra tricky with her close ranged options like kicking, and even then this only disables her arms for two seconds. Mac could also theoretically hit Min Min's mask off her face, but even if he knew about this, which is very unlikely, Min Min gets hit constantly by attacks hundreds of times stronger than what Mac is dishing out. It's unlikely that he'd be able to get anywhere close to being able to do this. While Little Mac is extremely skilled and he's taken down incredibly tricky opponents, Min Min has fought her way to the top of a global tournament through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fighters, at a bare minimum, and just like Mac's opponents, these foes had tricks up their sleeves, like teleporting or otherwise mixing up their attacks. Min Min just proved to be too much of a pasta powerhouse for Little Mac to overcome. At the end of the day, Min Min is the winner and will be moving on to the next round of the Smash Bracket. Next time on the Smash Bracket. Another round of ramen, please. I'll have a water without any ice.